All right, let's see what's happening here. We'll pop this over here. Max, it's the first one that pops in. All righty. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How you doing, Mr. Jamie Blackburn? Very good. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Kelly? I'm great. Thank you. That's right. And the video is working right. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Welcome, everybody. So let's see. What, what's the question of the day? Question of the day is, number one, where are you from? And number two, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie of all time. And if you can't think of one, just put the first one that comes to your brain. So what, what about you, Jamie? What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie, I think, is Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. What a great movie. It was a good movie. That I was, didn't want to go. You didn't want to go? No. Nope. Somebody made you go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So where are you from and what's your favorite movie? That goes in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know how to do the chat. Right there. All right. So mine, I'm from Woodstock, Maryland. Oh, I'm just typing on the wrong freaking thing. That's what happened. I can't even type in my own chat. <laughs> Godfather. Nice. Nice, nice. We were from Oklahoma. Tarantino. Go Fargo. I got you. Malcolm X. Cameroon. Love that. I am. I'm, I'm typing mine. I'm very deep, by the way. Mine is. There it is. The greatest Christmas movie ever is my favorite. <laughs> In case you don't know, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I don't think that's always an ongoing discussion. That's right. And if you listen to any sports show and they do that, it is um, is what is the what is the best what's the, the best Christmas movie ever after Die Hard because they can they can never get past that. Ah, Doctor Strange Love, very good, Max. Digging back. All right, and Michael, nice coming in from uh, where is Michael coming from? Dallas, Texas. Nice. Um, coming to America, Dion. There's one. Regina's Castaway. So, favorite line from that? It, we we actually did this at a at an event one time and asked this question. You had to fill out your favorite movie and a line from your favorite movie, and then I pulled people out of the hat, like pulled it out of the hat. It's okay. You have to either say or act out wow. a line from the movie, right? It's a tough well, one. Well, son, there it is right there. <laughs> well, son, that's exactly right. So uh, everybody knows, well, son, oh, well, son. Love it. Uh, Boys, I do Pride and Prejudice, digging in there. There's, that, that's a wonderful one. Uh, PG <laughs> Israel Jamie won't have many PG 13. Obviously, Israel knows Jamie for some. Wow, yeah. Well, I believe Israel's from Oklahoma. I grew up in Oklahoma, so <laughs> there you go. That's that's funny. All right, well, good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen. At least I think I am. Let's see if this actually works. Make sure everybody can see that. We'll get this thing cooking. Man, can you believe it's May 3rd already, Ke Kelly? Can you, meet, can you believe that? Absolutely not. It, it is insane. The older I get, the faster things run. I don't know how that works, but it does. All right, fantastic. Well, we'll go ahead and get us cooking. Glad, we'll, I'm sure some other folks will be landing. And, and the question of the day, if you have no idea what the heck people are putting in there, it's, it's where you're from and your, and your favorite movie. So mine is, uh, like I said, the greatest Christmas show, greatest, greatest Christmas movie ever, obviously, is Die Hard. Of course it is. So uh, I'm Dave Law. I'm the Gov Brief host. I want to welcome Jamie Blackburn, who's the director of iAdvantage Software. How you doing, Jamie? Great. Awesome. And Kelly Chapman, and she works with the plant and animal agricultural scientists with iAdvantage. So you got a little bit of background in, in uh, USDA work. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. There you go. So uh, tell us a little bit about where you guys are. Wait a minute, with I advanced. Did I miss something? Sure. 
You did miss a few, I think. That's yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about Ivan okay. before we get started. So we've been around since 2003. We're we're here in Cary, North Carolina, which today is just the most beautiful weather you can imagine. Um, 30 plus years we've been helping people capture their data, manage it, and report on it. Um, and almost all of our our data somehow ends up in some way at the USDA, EPA, and FDA. And we are a small business and now a GSA schedule holder. Whoop, whoop. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. And yeah, we do want to welcome some folks here. We do have folks from USDA and EPA. That's the primary focus, but other people find out about us and come out and come to us from GovBrief. So we appreciate that. So uh, we will go ahead and let you. Here's what they said, Jamie. You're not going to believe this, but James said there's an applicable if there there's a best briefing ever if there's applicable solutions to data analytics issues we face in our agency i think we'll talk a little bit about that don't you think yes all right and victor says we let data drive the strategy and highlight data limitations very cool how about that yep um let's see sarah has said if i learn how to maintain data integrity big problem right huge big problem right kelly yep that's so true shout Charlemar, devised data and survey results and survey tools. Love it. We're talking about that too, right? Yes. Um, Deborah says the EPA studies performed pertain to FIFRA. Is that right, Kelly? You're going to do something about that? I think you must have written these for these attendees, Dave. <laughs> these are real, actually. Uh, Madeline, the, the resources are provided in PDF form for reference later. As a matter of fact, it will be. We're going to drop that right in here so the resources are there for you in PDF form. We're actually going to ask a question about PDFs in a minute, dealing with surveys. Margaret Margaret says, the roles of contracting officer and process. Love that. Jennifer, I come away knowing how to collect data with no errors. Ooh, how would you love to have no errors in your data? None. I, there you go. Barbara. If you have some basic descriptions of terms and concepts that needed for those who are not fully up to speed, I think we'll be able to do a, get you a little bit up to speed. And if I learn about design and data collection, fantastic. Well, I think we'll talk about those. And the other part is please address Victor against is what can we do as an organizational body to improve data collection and recording? Exactly why we're here, right, Jamie? That's right. There we go. James, what can we do as an organization? Well, I did that twice, apparently. <laughs> Isa, how could research management centers provide effective reporting on research performance for the organization? Love that. Um, how is R&D data different from other data categories in data management, quality and necessity for cleansing? Love that one too. All these are great. Tatiana, I have, I have to have redundancy. So if somebody jacks up a file, no way that ever happens in USDA or EPA. No way, J Jamie, right? Right. <laughs> And do uh, you have best practice suggestions for that? I think we might. Um, and Aaron, what, is, what data access assets does USDA have ready for other agencies to access? Love that. Um, and Jeff, what recommended strategies for ensuring data integrity? Again, integrity uh, and, and accessibility of systems and requirements evolve in the future. Love that. Uh, hopefully we'll get to, to all those. If not, we're going to go back right to that. I have another one, I think, that, that will pop in that I saw come in as well when we get to the Q&A side, because you can actually participate. It's just an agenda. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we'll give you an idea of, of, uh, of, of who um, Jamie and Kelly are. We'll get to some challenges, talk about framework, and we will be discussing the scientific methodology about how you can collect that data so that it does maintain number one maintain integrity and also you don't have to go scrubbing the bejeebers out of it because you collected it right on the front end right kelly amen that's right and so uh flexibility integrity and uh get to your q a throughout this there's i don't know how many folks we got 37 folks here so that's a little bit larger so we will uh, make sure that we we include you whatever you'd like to talk about but i think that's a, it's intimate enough that we can keep it open for the dialogue if anybody has any questions. Session docs, uh, Terry, if you can pop those into the chat, if you haven't already, you'll have the presentation. That was one of the requirements for the best briefing ever, as a matter of fact, Jamie. So this is the best briefing ever because we did a PDF. That's how high the standards are here. All right, if you've been living under a rock and you have no idea how these Zoom controls work, I can't imagine that's the case. 
Uh, but if you would like some additional features, you can go up to the top and click the side-by-side -side mode and make, make us bigger and smaller. And we love participation, don't we, Kelly? Amen. We love it. That's right. So let's, uh, let's make sure that you can participate. And if you have something you want to do offline, send it to info at, uh, at iAdvantageSoftware.com. It'll be there the whole time. But if you have any questions or you want to participate in any way, raise your hand, hit the Q&A, throw something in the chat, and we'll do our best to be able to do this uh, and have you included in the conversation. And speaking of permission to be included in the conversation comes directly from GSA. It's not affiliated endorsed by GSA or any other agency and provided to you for informational purposes only. And your participation is voluntary. And guess what? It does, it's not an endorsement or commitment to purchase from any vendor. That's what gives you permission from the legal types for you to be here and participate in things like polls, which is why in the world did you decide to join us today? There's a bunch is here. My team's looking for better data management options. My team needs a better way to manage old data. And I can't read the rest of that. My so boss. There we go. Me. And new data collection. My team needs a better way to share data and experimental phases, love, and making it live. I'm in procurement. I want to learn about I advantage or my boss made me come. Somebody's got to click that. You can pick as many as you want, by the way. And, uh, and we will continue the conversation about that so there's a whole bunch there's there's folks here uh, if you if you're if you'd like to open up and say looking for better ma data management or manage old data what are the concerns that you have if you want to have the conversation we can have part we want to make sure we hit what you would like to talk about and kelly's like telly's already stoking people making sure that they want to participate <laughs> and the, the q a the Q&A, um, so I, I should like to know the data collection and reporting SOP and QA, QC for federal agencies and their partners. Wow, Kaminko, that's great, great question. Um, sta so standard operating procedure and quality assurance and quality QC, right? Um, and then it would be nice to have an Excel comparison chart for all agencies to facilitate the comparison of SOPs and QA, QCs of the agencies, there should be some consistency. We agree there, Kaminko. Um, and even better would be if they had a platform where they could just access those across agencies. That would be really, really nice and, and easier even than Excel. Right. And uh, Kamiko says, who are you paid by? I am paid. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. I advantage. <laughs> I know that's that's where GovBrief, we we actually assist in multiple ways in the government world. We do we do work for the feds and we do work for industry. In this instance, this is for industry and it is relevant. Uh, you know, idea how you guys started is because OMB provided your your name <laughs> as, as somebody that would make sense. Uh, quality assurance and quality control. So there you go. So I think I answered all those, Kamiko. Love the fact that you're calling us out and who we're paid for. Love that. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, also, public transparencies, these SOPs and QSA protocols. Love it. I, I love the fact that you're involved. And I'm not sure how much we're going to get into the QA and QC of interagencies, but I'll bet you, by golly, with, the, with some of the conversations that we've had on this topic, Jamie, we could provide Kamiko a good conversation, follow-up conversation to answer whatever. I don't know whether, uh, whatever Kamiko needs. How about you? Sure that? can. So there you go. So let's see. My team is looking for better data management options. That's good news. And my team, that's, that. I'm going to end this poll. I'm going to share it for everybody so that so we can keep the conversation going. And if there's any other Q&A about this that you, you would like to talk about, um, you, so look at that, Kelly. What do you think? Um, Matt, so, I'm, so I'm not sure I'm seeing what you want me to see, but what I'm just, uh, it looks you're looking like looking at the we, poll, at the poll results, right? Okay. Well, it looks like we have, um, about 36 of 37 people that responded. So we really appreciate that participation. <laughs> what we would like to better understand is, uh, when you look, talk about looking for better data management options as we go through today, understanding what your current opportunities are and how you're managing data. 
Um, also, the second one looks like it would be the second most important, and that's new ways or better ways to manage old data and new data. And that is across industry, government, everywhere right now. And that is part of what we hope to talk about what's important when you are collecting new data, how to set that up, and also how to manage it going forward. And so um, this is wonderful. Now, Dave, I'm still learning this uh, process. So are the participants able to, uh, dis to talk with us right now? Can they, they can, if they, they can raise their hand. They can uh, they can shoot in a chat or they can do the Q and A any way they want to. They can they can participate. I'm gonna okay. stop sharing that that so that uh, that's out of everybody's way. I think that makes it disappear off of your screen. Um, so we we know that there's a bunch. Wait, make sure that's good. Uh, we know that there's a bunch of issues. If you have any questions or you want to engage in any way, pop it in the chat or the Q and A, and we're good. Is there? I would also just like to say to all the participants that don't assume that we already know everything about how your agency works or that your uh, group works the same as others on the call that's from the same agency, because we find there's a lot of variability within agencies and across different teams, and, and we want to understand that better so we can help you as much as possible today with your questions. No doubt. So, so we also know, Jamie, we know there's a bunch of big data challenges. Sure, sure. It's it's an idea part, of what this, you part of us coming into this conversation was really about the fact what we've learned over 30 years of dealing with uh, the sponsors who have just unbelievable amounts of data and the data is exponentially growing so that it's at that point where I, mean, I find this part of four filing cabinets worth their data every 15 minutes. That's like a full pickup truck full of paper all the time um, that we're all creating individually. And so then there's 463 exabytes after exabytes are uh, what, zettabytes and then yottabytes, my favorite. So when we get to there, I'm not sure uh, how we're going to deal with it, but it's not going to stop. In fact, as we're talking right now, our data is growing. It's created huge management issues. Everything from people taking data and summing it up the derivation or even the manipulation of, and, and, and the lack of security around data about having our data collected. And then we know that it has a life and some life is really extending. Believe it or not, we don't wanna get rid of data. It's, it's unless there's a, a policy, um, we wanna to continue to keeping data for future reference, especially in our world in the scientific industry. For documentation, well, as data grows and someone thought why they're collecting it, they may have forgot to tell someone else why they're collecting it. And huge integrity gaps. Uh, we, we may collect enough data individually, but it never comes together. And you can imagine if one person only asks for zip code and one person only asks for a town, um, there still be issues um, as towns grow with new zip codes. So uh, huge gaps, tricky to convert data into valuable insights. We all know that this data is going to have artificial intelligence placed over it someday. And we also know that artificial intelligence is making a difference, but we still need to collect data for our own reasonable methods of making good decisions. We're not collecting it for our, just to feel good. We're collecting it to make good judgment calls. That's a good on. call. Growing data for use in business zones will not scale. It, it'll just keep going. If, you, if you're collecting bad data today, you'll have bad data tomorrow integrated with the new data. And Tommy review by all stakeholders. We feel like this is something that needs to be there all the time. So if you need data, as you start collecting it, you don't say, well, I'm gonna check it out in a few weeks. You wanna see that it's growing and growing correctly. Yep, fantastic, I love that. And, and so how do you collect or get your data right now? And we already know, because we've done a, a couple of these with different agencies. Uh, right. This is more specific to USDA and EPA for project and study management, because that's one of the areas we drill down into. So how are you doing it? Spreadsheet, paper forms, you can pick as many as you want here, uh, survey tool. And we already know pretty much, oh, some folks are doing phone and email still, that's good. We know that one of the, the biggest ones is, we, are, we already know what it is pretty much, but phone and email, taking a lead. 
here, Jamie. I didn't expect that one. Yeah, did you? no, I didn't expect that either. No. no. Yeah, and USDA, NRCS, and different places that deal directly with on farm um, at participants phone is a huge part of it still there's actually still live phone surveys and so forth that those agencies do every year wow. and so that is still a big part of it and that's and, wild and we need to give this group a pat on the back for being so uh actively uh engaged in these polls because it'll help us to to do a better webinar that's suited to what you are looking for today so we thank you for participating absolutely and then going all the way down to, to having actually some of the tools in hand, right? So that's right. From from the paper forms all the way and, and emails all the way through. I'm not surprised about the top one though. I can tell you that, Jamie. And we oh, got a yeah. raised hand, Dave. We, we have a raised tilt. hand. While yeah. while we're doing that, let's uh we'll pop open to Gerald. Gerald Tillman, you there? Yes, sir. Hey, how are you, sir? Where are you calling from? Um, I'm in Maryland. I work Man. in D.C. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. I'm not too far from you. Go ahead. What, what you got USDA, on your mind? I, I'm USDA NAS, uh, Chief of Survey Administration, responsible for over 350 surveys a year. And you don't have all the answers there for us at NAS. Uh, phone is one, but we do face-to-face -face interviews with producers. Nice. And we actually collect data for most of all the um, USDA agencies with, within USDA. All right. So we need that. So note to self, add face to face to that, right? Kelly fails on that one. I should have known <laughs> that, Gerald. So thanks for Gerald, calling me out on that one. That's all right. Gerald, when hey. you do face to face, are you doing it on paper again or are you doing it on a, a pat, an iPad of some sort or? Well, during COVID, we had to go all face, all our field enumerators had to do uh, phone only just to keep them safe and the producers safe. But sure. we're going back now. Um, and so they actually, most of all the samples will have the option of returning mail, phone, uh, and field. So we, we try to hit them all. Um, but there are some uh, targeted data collection strategies where we only do face to face for impact records and such. But um, yeah, our, our, um, our survey tool instrument is just um, ideal for setting up survey management uh, data collection strategies and we go to full gamut. We're just getting into the process of going to um, um, our uh, text messaging. We're getting ready to do text messaging and email. That's why I chose email. And uh -huh. a lot of our agribusinesses, we do agribusinesses as well, like um, grain elevators and such. Uh, where it'd be better if they do it by email or, or text. And so we're getting into uh, the next level of um, technology with collecting data. Well, fantastic, Gerald. What, what great insight you have. And I imagine with doing 350 surveys a year, that, that's, a, that's a crazy number. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, yeah, fantastic. I, it, it would probably blow your mind if he told you how many participants that actually included as well. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't leave out the census of ag. That's the only mandatory. All the others are voluntary uh, and, and surveys. And as everybody in in uh, statistics that, that do surveys, we have taken a hit on response rates, and we're trying to figure it out. It it's no no it, no different than us. When we start, it's funny you say that. We were talking about this early, Gerald. In, in in doing these briefings, we do surveys as part of it, like this poll, right? So so the poll itself is a survey, but but we were talking that you it used to be that we had you know 90 95% usually and now it's about 77% and uh, Kelly said I can't call the people losers that aren't responding she said don't do that <laughs> no we're going to nicely ask if those seven of you who have not responded would do so we would greatly <laughs> appreciate it there you I'm go. I'm trying to teach Dave how to act, but you know, <laughs> when you hire these people, you just never know what you're getting. So that's right. That's a fact. You never know what you're gonna get, right? Right, Gerald? That's all. Yes, sir. Thanks, and man. Gerald, before before we move away from your uh input, um, could you share with us anything about what the current 
software or survey tools you use are in terms of, I know you've mentioned text message and so forth, but I'm sure there's a software that facilitates that. Well, we have a contractor that we hired called Snap and it's, it's all developed um, just for us. So it's nothing off the shelf. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna end this poll because we guilted somebody into doing it. One per one more person did it. <laughs> Yay! Way to go! All right, so we we close that out. Um, and, and just so everybody knows, the one we thought was gonna win won, Jamie. Right? That's right. That's right. Spreadsheets still the number one way to do it. And uh, we so we appreciate you guys letting us know that you are you are not alone, right, Jamie? All That's that. Right. We, we found that across the agencies. So in getting true value of the, out of the data, let's talk about that sure. real quick. So, so at, the at the very beginning, before you start collecting, and I know you might have already been collecting, it's always good to kind of, you know, stop and, and think about what you're doing because there's some key points about when you decide to collect data. If you were sitting here today and your next project is to get some data start to be collected, you have the ability to really affect the outcomes for much later. So the first thing is um, you, you're, you're always responsible. The design as well as the collecting, they need to know the purpose. That person needs to know. Sometimes they need to know how long it's gonna take them. Sometimes they need to know what's the commitment. Will there be a second question and things like that? So, so it's always important that you take on that responsibility of that data that you're asking for. The second one is, and this is something we've learned after years and years of collecting data is it's very expensive to, to ask people to stop and provide answers to things. Sometimes they're, they're interrupting other work or sometimes they're actually having to go off and do some research. And any kind of mistakes that you haven't thought through as potential mistakes um, can be very expensive at the back end because it's really hard to fix. This is a measure twice, cut once situation. Yeah, absolutely. And we see that a lot of times where in the AI world, they're trying to, they're trying to get the data to be usable after the fact. Um, so, and all of it is mistakes, usually mistake resulting from mistakes in the framework in the sure. beginning. If there's any Look, data scientists here, they're, they, they're able to tell us. This is where they spend a lot of time. So we asked how you collect it. Now tell us how you manage it. Because now you're talking about, okay, you got it. And Jamie's talking about that very, the very, very thing. Once you have it, now what are you doing with it? Is right. it transferring by email, transfer files with, share, with SharePoint or some kind of portal? Or does it just happen verbally? Uh, this is another place. And by the way, um, I can I can tell you this, Gerald. You can pop open your mic anytime. I have I have you unmuted. You I know that you have understood the protocols here. You can mute yourself and then unmute if you want to throw in any time on what's happening within within your survey world because this is exactly what people need to know and, and what they're up against uh, and how important it is from the beginning to to get that data right. And sometimes yeah, we, you go ahead. Yeah, we we um actually to, to manage and track, we, we actually use um, R and have created a dashboard that tracks every survey. We know uh, how many are checked in, we know how many are edited, we know how many are clean and the estimated response rate. So that's been a real plus and any and everybody in our agency can, can uh, know where we are with projects. And uh, the other thing that we've improved on, we've, uh, have a the data collection um, portal. So farmers can either create their own profile and we kind of piggyback in USDA has the farmer.gov where producers can go in and do all their FSA work and, and sign up for programs. And they can also uh, pivot back and forth between the portals, between NAS portal and the uh, farm.gov portal. So making that uh, um, connection that we've been trying to do that for 30 years. Producers have been <laughs> it's, us to but make it's it so in. easy, Gerald. It's, why is it taking so long? It, yeah, so we figured it out. Uh, we got it working. And so they can come in and do their survey and then do their business with the rest of the USDA agencies. Love it. So it's integrated into your whole system. That's very yeah, cool. Yes, sir. And, and it's all, all, uh, all in the cloud. On the cloud, flying in the cloud. 
I think it is uh, also important that even uh, Gerald's conversation here highlights how many different divisions there are. I think he is referring to the National Agri-Marketing Services and then, of course, the farm service agencies. Uh, we haven't even talked about the uh, some of the other um, NRCS and so forth that uh, is important. So there's a lot of different portions of, of USDA uh, where data is handled. And so glad that we have lots of those people today. Absolutely. And and Kamiko is is the superstar of the chat. So and the Q&A by the oh, it's Q&A. So uh, please speak to limitations on government data collection and paperwork reduction act. Yep. The, the, and, and ICR, et cetera. So uh, the paperwork reduction act do, does apply. However, there's sometimes you don't have any other option, right, Jamie? That's right. Yep. We, we're probably, we're generally driven by whoever the customer is about what we're doing. And, and usually at that point, we, we start to talk about the various, support structures that we have to accommodate. And it's not and just sharing it everywhere. It's actually making sure it's shared at the right places. And such. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> and speaking of that, please speak to accessibility to public to publicly funded data collection results as taxpayers are paying for it. Love to be able to talk a little bit about that. Kamiko, we're going to take that one. Jamie's going to talk to you about that individually because <laughs> yes. It really depends on what it is that you're surveying and, and then how that gets released on the back end after the fact, right, Jamie? That's right. And I do uh, think which, it's quite interesting that the poll results are, are leading into what we have to talk about. So I think many of you will find that this is what you were looking for in terms of information today. Awesome. And Kamiko, I, you got so many great questions and, and comments. Uh, when the government makes a claim that best based on data or data reveals the policy regulations are based on the data, you're you're talking politics, everything you're rolling into, right? So, it, it, the, one of the biggest challenges and one of the in the public's perspective is that the data has good integrity, right, Jamie? That's right. That it, 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 the source is there. That's what they call data provenance. You know, Kamiko's getting into is is what is the new world of what they call federated data and, and such that we make sure we don't, uh, you know, it's open and accessible, but only to those eyes that are supposed to see it through, through some sort of compliance regulation. Yep. Yep. And Kelly's pinging people for the eight more responses. Love it, Kelly. <laughs> uh, and one more from, from Kamiko, I think this is great in, in the Q and a is garbage in garbage out. Absolutely true. How are agencies, ensuring that the data gathering is actually answering the questions or the needed data. Killer, killer. It, it is exactly right. what everybody else's problem is, right? That's right. We're, we're here to talk about, as, as like Gerald was talking about his analytical tool using R, um, we actually start before then. We're talking about collecting the data in a raw format so it has a life and it, and it continues to live for as long as you need it. Analytical tools on top can do amazing things now. R, there's SAS, there's, there's uh, uh, Tableau, there's Click, there's, there's so many tools. And it's almost becoming, people are um, e extremely, extremely committed to whatever format, including Excel. Um, that's true. Including spreadsheets. Um, that's that true. Once they've started and that's their tool of use, it, I don't know if you've seen some of these people, but their data scientists are amazing with data. Yeah. And better, we, and we just it, focus it, on the data. And to your point, and, it, and everybody here can relate to this. Better the devil you know than than trying to try something different sometimes, right? So appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and share this out. Like you said, Kelly, exactly in the wheelhouse, top two things are exactly the problems that folks are having. And just to reiterate, we're all in the same boat. Everybody is in the same boat. Um, appreciate that very much. So let's talk about what, what we came for. Let's talk about the how, how what's the strategy? Because if you get your strategy sure. right and you get your, your metrics right from the beginning, you're good, right? So, so all those tools we shape. talked about, right? We talked about all these different methods. Um, it's it's really important to start with a good strategy. And like I talked about kind of your your positioning of, of thought of when you start. Now I'm talking about what are you gonna be looking for, whether you're doing it by paper or whether you're doing it by a product. 
Um, you, you basically want to make sure, first of all, that your requests are data simple, meaning you do want to ask the individual question, not a compound question. In other words, if you're getting a, uh, an operation, you don't want to say, uh, uh, you know, how old are you? And then are you getting the operation within a time frame? You really want to ask dates of when they were born, things like that. You want to keep it very much to its distinct simplicity so that later on data scientists can do amazing things with that data and they in form can apply, say, a, cal a calculation against. You design and consider the, the consult, you should consult with an expert while you do this because it's really important. We often think we know exactly what we need from someone. And I don't want to say, but I spent 40 years now with my wife. I have to be very careful what questions I ask. <laughs> And, and not try to inspire her answers, right? We don't want to overthink the fact of how they might answer because we'll learn a lot from that. You decide what to collect and how to protect it. You, you just don't collect data. Again, I said it's, it's an expensive proposition to decide to collect data. Um, you got to collect a, a good platform. If paper works, you know, Gerald is, is collecting things through one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm sure that at times there's, or now he's going to do text. Well, now you start saying, here's how we collect data and how people can answer it and feel comfortable with answering it that way. Mm -hmm. Even here, we have to still go over how to use Zoom after the last two years, because it's really <laughs> important that there might be people who use WebEx or some of the other products. That's exactly um, right. And you want to collect and verify data. There is no second try. So when you collect it, you want to know where it came from. You want to have that, that history and that legacy of that data. And you want to make sure that it's constantly tight and straightforward. So here I'm talking about the best practices. So design and define the categories of data. Really start with big whiteboards and such. Ensure all data is using the same format. We don't want to collect date one way and date another way. This is really important, Jamie. That's right. I mean, you get this nailed down at the beginning. And, and Gerald, you can throw in too, how important it is to have this nailed down from the beginning, because otherwise it gets, just the date format alone can really jack you up. Go so, ahead, Jamie, I'm sorry. Yeah, so no, so it's so important that you have that right. I mean, it took us 20 years to get address right. And, and now we expect Google just to give it in sometimes. Um, use closed-ended responses to be collected. That means you, you really do think about all the possible answers. It's really nice to put other there and other you can learn from, but you got to be very careful when you use other. Use numeric codes versus character strings wherever possible, because sometimes people are having to fill this in by hand. And I know when I took my test as a kid and I'd fill in each blank of my, my name, James Oliver Blackburn takes a lot of spaces. So it would be nice if I just had a cool code I gave them. If any data is unknown, research the best method to handle it. You, you want to know how to handle the unknowns, the others, and so forth. And at all times, if a data site is going to be collected, you want to focus on that raw data. You want to break it down to its most basic pieces for collecting. You want to consider metadata. We're going to talk a minute about that. And then test, test, test. Mm. Put something together. Try it out. I used to try, try things out on my wife and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law used to break more of my logic than anyone else. And it's a great <laughs> opportunity to always test out what you're thinking. Love it. And uh, we, we got your, we got it, man. Your job, J-O-B, James that's Oliver right. Black. That's it. That's right. That's, right. that's, that's, that's your, happening. that's your super secret code. That's right. <laughs> so, and when you're thinking about the future, we've, we've learned this. We, we know we're growing. Everyone is suffering from the same pr problem. In, in, our, in our world of sponsors, I can tell you right now, the data science role is growing and growing and growing and people spending more time with their data, the data they've collected, the data they have. Uh, so metadata is coming and metadata is starting to be used more and more. Some people here, Gerald may already be doing this, but it's really talking about the data you collected. So you can describe, we collected this for this reason. We can say that this provides you the most, you know, probable answers for this condition or something like that. Yep. And in fact, beyond metadata, there's a new thing about the, really the, the sharing. And this is of course, under the rules of compliance and regulation and, and to make sure that what they call federated and that is fair. It means that it is, it is findable. So if a data scientist wants that data, they don't have to find the person. They can find it through these type of metadata catalogs and such. It's accessible, I can get to it. If I can't get to it, I know who to talk to if I need to get it 
or if I need to find out what rules. There's amazing things going on some agencies around this where we see even litigation overruling uh, uh, what people can see and can't see. It's interoperable, meaning that it, it is actually usable within code where we talked about what products we love. Gerald uses R, I'm sure R has all sorts of capabilities and it's reusable. We don't wanna ask the same person, how many times do we ask the same question twice? And we've answered it. How great is it when they actually already know something about us? Absolutely. So you want all these things to be in there. And this goes to what Kamika was talking about um, in, in the mandatory federal applying records retention de uh, disposi disposition and scheduled for gathering and what, what can be done and what can't be done. All that flows through this, this fair model to say, hey, what, what are we doing? Start with why are you even collecting this stuff, right? So, so often we miss the why and then that helps people answer the right questions for us. So I love that, Jamie. That's yeah, if stuff. you look up FAIR now, it's a, it's a great model to build to. Most yep. of us aren't there, but most of us can start to see why we want to get there. Exactly. So why scientific methodology, Jamie? So th this is the basic heart of why we came up with our product called eStudy. But this is the heart of why we, we've sort of evolved at being a scientific group. And so out of necessity, and Kelly will tell more about this, but out of necessity, we found that we needed to follow some basic rules of, the, of a good methodology. The first one is you define the problem or the data requirement. You design the process to answer it, and you do it over and over, and at some point test it, right? And then you manage that process through the entire data collection. And you even do things like, which we're, we're getting used to with blockchain stuff, is you don't allow people to delete data. You don't allow them to just get rid of things unless there is a pre-thought out process. And then manage, review, and communicate and report data. You know, nothing's worse than you need to get data and it's Monday and you feel like you're exhausted just getting it out over the weekend. And then Tuesday, your boss thinks you should have answers. Well, you should. And so uh, like in Gerald's case, they have a dashboard, tells them what's going on in a consistent way. It's such a key point to how we learn the heartbeat of what we're doing. Love it. And just to throw in here, for just a comment and I've, her hermana her her herma jeans herma homo jeans um sorry if that i butchered that because i know it's not right uh just a comment when come when it comes to farming field enumerators have been very instrumental with establishing and gaining trust absolutely uh with farmers as well as keeping the trust because they themselves have farming backgrounds enumerators are the backbone of data collection who who helps with better response rates when it comes to the to field and face to face. I any any argument with that, Jamie? No, no, absolutely, fantastic, great comment. Appreciate that. And tell me how you actually say your name, and I'll get it right next time. I promise. <laughs> so then we once we understand where the scientific methodology kind of helps with that, let's talk about the designing of it, and sure. uh, and how it helps you there. So so we've kind of broken down to whatever product you choose or whatever uh, even paper format you want these sort of things uh, involved. So if today you're sitting there and you have to do a collection, then you're gonna have to decide how to do it or what product to use. Um, the first thing is you have to minimize those repetitive tasks for those, those who are collecting it. Sometimes people can be asked so many times they get frustrated just by, because you're the new one out. Um, it, in our case, we're designed by scientists for scientists. That's how we came about being because we were, we kind of figured we had to have like over a hundred fax machines back then in order to get through this. And that wasn't going to work because what we're doing is what they call edge uh, computing. We're, we're out there in the fields, um, online, offline, and we're doing it when they're ready to respond to our studies. You wanna cr quickly create studies all along the supporting study information, meaning you want it all to come together. You want those all to be available. And then finally, security of data protection. Absolutely, the most important thing that we hate to say, we think we have a really cool thing, in, like in our case, our software, if it's not safe and if it's not controlled and managed, it ain't gonna work. You're absolutely right. And okay, then so then the collecting part, that's the next part. So you've designed it, now you're gonna put it out. In our case, we often do things like uh, campaign it. In other words, Monday morning, we're gonna start doing this. You want it to be uniform, consistent. 
Um, in our case, the people who collect data like our format and they like the way, they like seeing it. We do it for several different sponsors and they see it across the board. You have to be able to do it really wherever they are. And we're remote. Especially now. <laughs> That's right. It's a decentralized study manager. So it's both online and offline because we don't have perfect networks throughout the world yet. Um, secure and compliant with, in, in our case, with the requirements that we're judged by. Um, and in fact, they're just growing. I mean, I'm more and more now hearing about uh, GDPR and such. We have to continue this and keep up with it at all time. So everybody who's in our role has to do that. Then there's APIs. Data scientists really don't want to have to go through massive databases anymore. So they do want an API so that their program that they love, and in Gerald's case, it was R, can get <laughs> to the data easily and without kind of my time to tell them how to get to it. So we've set up APIs over time to do all these type of things like importing, but more importantly, getting the, the data out for exports and then putting into our system. Yep. And so we got, we're got we up to the next one, which is now we talked about it. We talked about collecting, talked about managing. Now we have to communicate this with everybody. And the same kind of thing applies here. Email, online, verbally, hard copy with PDF. We see that sometimes, right? right. Summary reports, only summaries. Data is only shared at the end of the, of the event or by re-entering the raw data in another format manually. Oh we have seen that <laughs> as and well. Jamie, Jamie, you got a question in the uh, chat box. Uh, you mentioned user design templates or that's a question from Marion. Sure, sure. So, so we'll talk about reports in a minute, but as far as uh, design templates, we use forms and such to enter the data. And oftentimes they're, they're based on previous work as well. So in, in other words, if two different people wanna collect something, we make sure that we use kind of the same format amongst both of them in collecting. And in reporting, you'll see templates. Well, Kelly, you could talk to this. Uh, the, the, the agencies require a certain method of delivering the data to them. And we are able to do that on the data when it's needed. Uh, Kamiko is asking, is an I advantage software a government contractor in terms of data management or just for training or both? Great question. It is. It's, it's our tool, it's our data management tool. It's, yep. the, it's that design, that collection, and, so, and we'll hear about in a minute reporting. Yep, that's great, Kamiko. Thanks for, that was a softball setup, just saying. <laughs> and this is a while I don't think we're going to get into this quite Kamiko because a lot of what we're talking about is the functionality of the I'm talking about your question about the data gathering efforts to be sponsored with real world example real world examples or DHS well we'll talk about real world examples but with DHS's office of disinformation and things like that that's like a political place um i have we don't we don't play in that area the objective is to get to have if you have data integrity you solve all the rest of the problems and your collection methodology as well as as the as the analysis of that data that's that right jamie if we yes yeah even yep. even the ability to go back and audit our data where it came from who changed it we actually exactly people, what if someone changes an answer from from one point to an x you can ask them to basically confirm and authorize that change. Yep. And we will get in, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll get you some links as well as some examples of, of what's been done uh, at USDA and the different methodologies as well. That's that's what uh, Kamiko is asking. And uh, I think you're gonna have a long conversation with Kamiko after this. Great. <laughs> and I put in the chat for those people who are multitasking while they listen to this and get credit for attending, we need your input on this poll. How do you communicate your data? We're still missing some folks. So. <laughs> Threatening. There, see, love it. All right, so we'll leave that open for just a minute. Um, and but while while they're talking about that, because ultimately you're talking about feeding that information back out to the stakeholders, right? Which is is really the reporting part um, of this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this so this gets out of everybody's way, but most everybody is using some sort of portal. So that's that's what's that's what's happening. Sure. Go ahead, Jamie. Tell us about the reporting side of things. So with with reporting, when you're choosing your method to to uh, communicate, you 
reporting is a, a kind of a general term. I mean, reports have very many different terms as far as uh, expectations. So, so reporting includes those templates. In other words, you want it to be the same. You want everyone to use the same method of, of get providing data. Um, you want to be able to do it at any of the levels, whether it's very detailed or very uh, an aggregated point. Um, so like Gerald was talking about his dashboard before, that would be a report to us. Um, they, reports can contain text tables and images, and then publishing formats can be added at any time or unlocked. In other words, when your boss says on Tuesday morning, hey, what's going on, you can give them an exact nature of what's going on and a number that's done. Just like if you notice our scientist Kelly has been watching how everyone's responding to the polls, um, because that's how people think, especially in science. <laughs> so true. So now we get to the workflow. It doesn't matter whether you're doing studies, experiments, surveys, questions, whatever it is. Let's talk about it. That's right. When you choose a tool, it's always the same. You want to design it, spend more time in design, you, you're guaranteed a, a successful. So it's like washing your hair. Design, collect, report, and then repeat it. And, and hopefully after reports come out, you might learn something. So you might get a little bit more information. And with our tool, for instance, it's not unusual for someone to realize that they're learning during, say, a study, they're able to add in one more question for every subsequent call without affecting the original request. Yep. Jamie, I'm just going to throw in here quickly because I know we're going to run out of time, but uh, we, uh, to the people that are interested in learning more about how to set up their data, we encourage people to look at the end result you want during the design process. And not only what is happening in the in life phase, but what do you want in that report at the end to make sure you have it set up correctly in your design process? Yep. And then about the now you're talking this is this is your particular platform, but as uh, as we were talking earlier within within the whole framework of everybody here, Gerald was even talking about cloud. Everything you're doing is in the cloud, right, Gerald? So that so all of this, you, you need to have that kind of access, but it has to work in other places too. So Correct. tell us about what you got, James. Correct. Go ahead, James. So, so yeah, Sorry, so, so with Gerald, he was saying that he has a portal. So that's where our cloud-based mm -hmm. platform is. It's it's 100% 100, 100 web-based. Um, it's scalable so that you can do 500,000 versus just 500 without without much of an issue and allows for data exchange and integration. You want that data to flow in and out of this, this, this hub of data. Um, it's compliant. We, we spend a tremendous amount of time going through audits and such with compliancy to make sure that we're GXP and 21 CFR part 11. Um, it's immediate access of results for all stakeholders as you're collecting it, as we've talked about several times. It's quickly and easily customizable to fit your science. So we found that our methodologies of using the scientific methodology works across the board. And we've also found that we continue to, to use our tool in different ways based on the users. So, so Kelly, tell us a little bit about how, what, what is this scientific methodology? You're the scientist. You're, you're using this to, to, to do data collection, USDA, EPA, all of those are rolled into this. So tell us how it, how it works. So the platform was set up, as Jamie indicated earlier, because we historically have been, uh, our sister company started out as a regulatory study management firm. We work with biology sites all over the world, not just in the United States. So we worked in multiple languages. We had uh, samples and shipments and data that needed to be communicated to many different places. And this was a tool to actually um, manage all of that. And not only to manage it, but to manage it uh, in real time. And we're talking about this started in the 90s. So this was way before uh, that was a standard process for science or for any industry necessarily. Um, and we, we have a platform that can actually help us to not only collect the data at each location accurately and appropriately so that it is usable and consistent, but also that we can share that data, as you said before, with the appropriate people at the appropriate times. And then we also can set up templates for reports, whether that be um, impromptu reports or final reports that go to agencies. 
so that we don't have to do that repetitive task of um, trying to handle the data and summarize the data and so forth, the system does that for us. So for instance, if I have a field site in Missouri that's collecting data in a corn trial, um, they are gonna send samples to a lab that's in Florida. And then um, I need to keep up with when the samples left, the shipment tracking information and so forth. This system collects all of that. And then we have uh, customized templates where we basically press a button. It pulls the information from the database into a Word uh, document that is set up as a template. Uh, and there we have it, voila. We basically have a report that's maybe 90% complete. We go back through and, and tweak it. And um, so this, this system is, was light years ahead of its time and still what it brings to the, to the forefront at, that we've been talking about today is that we, we do both sides of the coin. We're very accustomed to the science side or the data collection needs, what has to be built in for good data in the front end so that what you get out of the back is not the garbage that we have talked about before. And yeah, also yeah. so that long-term data can be merged together, we understand what can and cannot be done in terms of pulling old data and new data together. So and I think what's platform. interesting with what you said, uh, Kelly, is that the, the EPA reports are formatted the way the EPA wants to see them, USDA the way USDA wants to see them, and they can be formulated for whatever agency there is, as yes. opposed to tr having to pull that back in. And one of the questions that was in there, a little sneaky question you put in there, Kelly, was manually transforming that into something that looks like the way that they want to see it, right? Right. Yes. And and I think that it's important people know that, yes, we have been in private industry and work with some of the largest agricultural companies across the world for 30 plus years now. Uh, as I said, we've worked in Spanish, Portuguese, English. We have translation abilities. And all of that is because we learned it from necessity, that that was part of what we had to have to do business. Uh, but it applies across anything uh, that has to do with data collection and management. And uh, Gerald says, "Hey, folks, good to meet you." And Kelly, you were, on the, were you were right on the on to focus first and the needed outcome expected of the study to build the survey. Thanks, Gerald. And uh, designs and ask correct questions. We also use iPads for our field enumerator staff, where they manage their assignments, case workload. Enjoy. She, he has to sign off. Thanks, thanks, Gerald, for joining Thank us, you, and make sure we catch up with you for sure. Really appreciate you joining. us. We really and, appreciate your input because obviously yeah. you know what's got to be done. That's exactly right. I mean, you're doing 350 surveys a year. You better know. <laughs> All right. That's uh, right. So tell us, so speaking of that, the 350 surveys, that's just Gerald. So tell us about the type of system growth sure. you guys are seeing here. Sure. The type of stuff that Kelly's doing, um, our, our database right now, just to give you a sense for this year, has got 445 projects, 1,648 um, studies, um, which are made up of 18,000 trials. So you can see the repetitive nature that we're collecting data. As we speak right now, there's probably 50 people collecting data. And you can see the growth model on things like trials. And, and right now, and this is so important, we have gone through careful, careful design of 31,000 variables. The good news is we can reuse variables, but you can see that we've had to spend, as Kelly says, a lot of time and careful, careful consideration of what this data is going to do because some of this data has to live for a long time based on our customers' expectations. Love it. So, so here's, here's the next question and I'm already typing for Kamiko <laughs> because um, we, de we definitely have a lot more to talk about. And if you wanna continue the conversation, let us know when you wanna continue the conversation because talking with you guys costs how much? Nothing. Not a Free. thing, not a blessed thing. Talk nope. to Kelly and, and, and anytime we talk about these, this the idea is to, to get this, get the juices flowing, right? And say, hey, um, we, you know, whatever it is that you would like to talk about, we wanna make sure that, that you get what you need. And we start to get down into the weeds and the details and everybody else will go into a coma if we talk about those things. Uh, Kelly mentioned uh, doing, doing corn studies and 
I don't even remember Nebraska, wherever the heck you said, Oklahoma. I don't Missouri. Know. Missouri. It's one of those states, one of the flyover states. Uh, some of my favorite places, as a matter of fact. Uh, but the, when you think about that, just just being able to to have that conversation, to connect with others in your own group that you met, I'm telling you, we see it all the time. Somebody else is doing something very similar to what you need, and you guys can combine forces. So you're not asking the same questions over and over and over again, right, Jamie? That's right. And and that's that's what this is all about. So we will get to a place. Let's let's make sure we get to the rest of these, Kamiko. The answer is pick. I want to talk to somebody in the next week or two or not, immediately, depending on how how far off in advance there is, because there's no way we can get to all that stuff. <laughs> Good questions all, uh, including FOIA and, and the rest of those uh, for the roles and responsibilities. We definitely want to help you out any way that we can to get to where you need to. Um, let's see. Marion's asking, do you remember his name? I don't know who we're, who we're asking, Marion. Uh, we'll do what we can to, to connect you to whoever it is. As Kelly said, we will do that. Any other questions? Let me look at here. I, I see stuff from Kamiko. Um, is the government keeping track of who is accessing data and who's FOIAing it? I'm sure that they are in some form or fashion, but it's not organized. For FOIA, I know from other briefings that we've done, we're dealing with FOIA and and tracking of that type of information is done at the agency level, not at not not in a not governed in other places. Um, so, if there's no other questions here, let me make sure. I'm sorry if I'm missing anything. Kamiko, yeah, absolutely. We'll do. Kamiko, will, she Kamiko says. I think we really need to have a training on the data collection and management and sharing protocols. You're absolutely right. So we'll schedule that. We'll schedule that with Jamie and Kelly, and you can you can pull folks from your team for that exact thing, right, Jamie? That's right. So uh, tell us a, just a couple of the takeaways here for when you talk about e-study. Yeah. That's what you know better than anything else is your e-study platform, right? Right. And I'm hoping that as you as you as you end up here, that first thing is you you get an idea that our our platform was built for this kind of process um, to take advantage of the methodology of science. Um, the second one is, I think someone said earlier about garbage in, garbage out. I'm yep. saying good design equals good data. And you, can, you cannot successfully scale bad data. This scaling of data is not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Yep. And, and it's a good time to stop and think about the things you can do today that will make uh, either your life or someone else's better. Awesome. David Henderson had his hand raised. I got you unmuted. What you got there, David? You there, David? I'm asking to unmute. If you have the ability to unmute. You there? Almost. It looks like it's almost working. <laughs> Hang on, Kamiko. We'll get the we'll get to you as well. Let's see. Kamiko, you there? Make sure I didn't, I'm asking. I know some people are going to have to jump off. We just really appreciate the participation today. And uh, I stuck Jamie's email into the, uh, yeah. <laughs> into the chat box. He may shoot me, but <laughs> basically I want to make sure that if you need anything, you come back to us because we're interested in talking with you and trying to help you. And David and Kamiko, you're both unmuted. While while doing this, that we get, we get people out. We'll get you guys unmuted in a second. If you do, it, what we said earlier, you don't have to purchase from any vendor. But if you want to talk to iAdvantage, there there's our information. You need to update with that UEI. So uh, you will get a recap email. It'll be happening in the next couple of days. Today you'll get a a, a a quick recap. You'll have a finalized recap next week, including the presentation as well as all the handouts that were there. And there is Jamie's information. So if you want to bird dog him right now, uh, Mr. J-O-B, uh, also known as the job man. Uh, so uh, that's 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 his nickname and handle. So Kamiko or David, are you there? Would be able to talk? I can see um, that you're... Oh, there's Kamiko. Can you hear me? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. This is a great, uh, great presentation. Like I said, I have no idea how I got on this, but I do work with a lot of data. And, um, and so this has been really helpful. So I'm, I'm glad I sort of happened to get on your list. Um, well, but I was good. wondering in terms of data collection, 
uh, within our own group in terms of have you sent out a survey to you know this group or you know all the people that this email has been sent to to inquire what types of you know trainings or um, you know specific topic areas that they would be interested in. And as you can imagine, I'm interested in all the topic areas that I put in the Q and A. <laughs> um, and I think these are really critically important um, uh, topic areas to cover just in terms of our, not only our fiduciary duty, but, you know, our, our responsibility to the, the taxpayers and, and the citizens for their, their privacy and, and, you know, and uh, being an efficient government and so on and so forth and accountability and transparency. So those are some of my, my big, you know, um, interest areas. Sure. So um, I, I really encourage you to get together with Jamie and, yes, and Kelly. Absolutely. And you guys can chat about exactly what you would like to do because we do have the capacity to do those things. And if there's something specific that you would like to know, we will do our best to be able to to to, to support you in whatever you need. Yeah, Kamika, yeah, we've been having times with uh, customers uh, in agencies where it was just wide open, just kind of talking through how we can do things. We we have as much to learn about the federal government agencies as as probably anyone does. Because we're, we're trying to come in here saying, hey, we, we have a tool that works pretty well and we think we, it could actually spread and be used. It would be perfect if more people would use it because then it would be more common base, as we found in the, in the industrial world. And yeah. I, got the, I did get a pronunciation from Ermohanes. Ermohanes. He had to go. <laughs> so... I appreciate that, Kamiko. We're, we're you, did you, you did you put in there that, that you guys you guys wanted to talk right? Yeah. So we'll follow up. We'll make sure we get the follow up with you for sure, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. All great information too. And uh, sounds like we could do a whole another briefing just on that alone. So Kamiko, you're awesome. And uh, anybody else to see perhaps? Oh, that, that's Kamiko saying. Um, I would just like to shout out to those people, if any of them are left on from NRCS, we would like to talk to you more as well. I know there were several people from across the country out of that same agency. So uh, please let us hear from you if, if there's any continuation of conversation we could have with you, because what you do fits what we've done with this software for many years. It would be an easy transition. Nice. Um, can I ask a question in terms of how many agencies you work with right now? We currently have um, reported and submitted data to USDA, EPA, FDA uh, for many years now. Um, and in terms of other state agencies and so forth, I do not have a, a counter for sure on that. So, so those three agencies primarily? Correct, yes. I see. Um, and has there been discussion about you know, obviously, though they're very data. Well, I mean, the whole federal government is very data heavy. Every agency collects data, but mm -hmm. in terms of like having one um, for consistency purposes, having one contractor sort of be the liaison for all uh, agents, federal agencies. I mean, frankly, I mean, just to be perfectly honest, I feel like this is, should be a government function. Um, like maybe you know uh, some, but but regardless, I know that we contract out a lot of work, um, and so, uh, but. Yeah, but I think it needs to be consistent, really into consistency. You're <laughs> absolutely right. And the, and the challenge, you hit it right there, Kamiko, is that the challenge is consistency. And while, you know, hey, the objective is to help the agencies get to where they want to go. And we found that when we communicate like this, at least we can get the dialogue to say, what should it be? And it would be great to have like, okay, this, here's the governing factor. Uh, very, very difficult to get across federal agencies. It's very difficult to get within just a single agency, right, Jamie? Just to get yeah, this, just absolutely. with somebody within one agency because of different stovepipes. Think about USDA. Are you with USDA or EPA? Can I'm with go? EPA, but EPA. We, I work a lot with USDA. Exactly. So, so bridging the gap between those, that's one of the reasons why we did this particular interagency briefing is because, hey, you're right. It, the, the govies should be able to pull the, those pieces together. However, we find that it, it winds up being a challenge just to get the communication structure. So when we communicate this, it is so awesome because we get, we get chiefs like 
like Gerald, right? Gerald comes in, hey, we're we're I'm the survey man. And That's then amazing. other people come in and I'm I'm just digging in the weeds in the survey that I've got to complete as a project manager. And never the two shall meet because there is no universal, there is no consistency to your point. Um, love it. I don't know if we're ever gonna see that, Kamiko. <laughs> just saying. Um, love to. I hope all so. Right, you so, know, many hands late load. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And we all work and together I think on it. As long as people are at least willing to have the communicate, like you, you throwing stuff out there. I, I need this. I need that. Boom. Let's let's figure out how to do that part, and then then evangelize the fact that that can turn into a best practice because we see that happen with the CIO council with SaaS software and all kind of stuff, right? So you you see these things start to gel over time, um, and then. Uh, we could talk. We, we could we could talk about the way that 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 breaks apart later, <laughs> anytime. But uh, great to have you. Uh, we will let everybody go. Any any parting comments from you, Kelly? You're awesome. I don't think so. Just again, I think this audience gets a, a big winner sticker today. We appreciate the participation, and uh, I think we also have some good opportunities to work together in the future. So we look forward to hearing from y'all. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Oh, I need to close that poll, Don. I didn't even <laughs> close it. Look at it. I got the thing. I got it into talking. And imagine that me getting into talking, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Very good. It is. Everyone you have you. a great day and thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.